You're going to walk home with more than maybe just a trophy tonight. I think lots of men. I'm not going to walk home with any men tonight. I'm going <laughs> to. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 times talk show hosts made celebrities uncomfortable. I'm going to ask you this, and it's embarrassing for me to ask you this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Are yeah. you a virgin? For this list, we're looking at the most notable moments from talk shows where the host created a visibly uncomfortable situation for their famous interviewee. Which of these made you cringe the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Megyn Kelly and Jane Fonda. Megyn Kelly Today. Jane Fonda and co-star Robert Redford appeared on Megyn Kelly Today in 2017 to promote their new Netflix film, Our Souls at Night. The pair are basically Hollywood legends, and conversation turned to their decades-long friendship and how they met. In the midst of this, Kelly complimented Fonda on aging, quote, beautifully and with strength, to which the audience applauded in agreement. But you, you've been an example to everyone in how to age beautifully and with strength and, <laughs> and unapologetically. However, Kelly then asked Fonda about having had plastic surgery. This clearly struck a sour note with the guest, who promptly turned the conversation back to the new film. But let me tell you why I, I, I love this movie that we yeah, did, Our yeah. Souls at Night. <laughs> <laughs> rather than plastic <laughs> surgery. Back to that. Many felt it was a tactless and sudden way to change the subject on Kelly's part, and Fonda was not having it. We really want to talk about that now? <laughs> <laughs> If looks could kill. Number 19, Joe Namath and Muhammad Ali, The Joe Namath Show. Former New York Jets quarterback Joe Namath had a short-lived talk show in 1969. One of his guests was boxing legend Muhammad Ali. The interview started with sports talk, but Ali, who was rather religious, became visibly uncomfortable when fellow guest, actor George Siegel, began to talk about nude scenes in his latest film. When you start talking about all that stuff, naked stuff, I don't take part in that kind of conversation. Though Siegel was the one responsible for the initial discomfort, Namath didn't do much to help once Ali voiced his disdain for the topic. He kept questioning him, trying to force him to speak on a topic he had no interest in. And the tension was apparent. But well, do you consider George a bad guy for doing something like you, that? I mean, I'm not going to talk about that. You wouldn't take Billy Graham, a white preacher, the Pope of Rome, and bring him on his TV show and cheapen him like this. And I, I was really disgraceful. Eventually, co-host Dick Schapp changed the subject. But it took way too long. I'll, sw I'll switch to a different subject. Would uh, you please? <laughs> Number 18, Ellen DeGeneres and BTS, The Ellen DeGeneres Show. When Ellen DeGeneres interviewed South Korean boy band BTS in 2017, their legion of fans was beyond thrilled, but they probably didn't expect things to take this weird turn. This day, baseball, Before the screaming, crying BTS army in the audience, DeGeneres asked typical questions using an interpreter about their songs and supporters. That's you certainly do have an army. I mean, can you believe what has happened? Like, y'all are... It's like when they got to LAX, it was like the Beatles were here. She then threw in an awkward question. Have they ever hooked up with any of their fans? After some translating, member V shouted a very distinct no. Not. Not. <laughs> not. Good job. No. <laughs> no. One uncomfortable pause later, the subject was thankfully changed. She was probably just trying to be funny, but the whole thing arguably felt inappropriate. And we're guessing the band members would have preferred to keep talking about their work instead. Number 17, David Letterman and Paris Hilton. Late Show with David Letterman. Unfortunately for celebrities, interviews don't always go as discussed beforehand, especially when attempts at comedy are made at their expense. In 2007, Paris Hilton was sentenced to 45 days in jail. This was of course publicized, but the star obviously did not want to talk about it. She appeared on Late Show with David Letterman with the intention of promoting and discussing her new perfume and projects. I like both. I like the weather in LA better, mm -hmm. but I love New York City. New York City is exciting though, isn't it? I was born here, yeah. Yeah, good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, how'd you like being in jail? Uh... Letterman, however, had different ideas and began to extensively question her about her time in jail and her friend Nicole Richie's. He also had questions about the food there for some reason. Did you start with the breakfast? Obviously. What would, the, what would the breakfast be? Like a hard-boiled egg and an orange. Well, that's not bad. Hard-boiled egg and an orange. You can't go wrong there, honestly. <laughs> Despite her repeated short answers and claims that it was a traumatizing experience she had no interest in discussing, Letterman did not let up. Well, obviously, it was a very traumatic experience. God, was it? You know, I, and I, I, think, I did it, so yeah. I, can, I feel like I can do anything You now. can survive anything, yes, sure. definitely. Number 16, Oprah Winfrey and Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson talks to Oprah. In 1993, Oprah Winfrey interviewed the King of Pop in a televised special titled Michael Jackson Talks to Oprah. 
it was an era in which it really seemed that Oprah could do no wrong. But it turns out that she too could create awkward moments. Winfrey asked Jackson a variety of questions, and she was very thorough. Everything from the pop star's childhood, popular rumors about him, and his romantic life were discussed. Do you go out? Do you date? Yes. It was when getting into the latter topic that the host suddenly asked the singer about his level of sexual experience. I'm going to ask you this, and it's embarrassing for me to ask you this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Are you a virgin? Jackson seemed timidly taken aback and uncomfortable. He responded explaining that it was too personal a topic for him to discuss on such a platform. So you're not going to answer it. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Number 15. David Letterman and Claire Danes Late Show with David Letterman Unfortunately, this isn't the only time on this list that you'll get creepy vibes. You look lovely in person as, as you do on, on film. In 1995, Letterman interviewed a then-up-and-coming Claire Danes. The conversation began with talk of astrological signs, which soon turned to the teenage Danes' age at the time. Can I ask you how old you are? When were you born? I'm 16, 1979. I just missed 1980. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? How old are you? 16. 16? I'm a youngin, you know. You're 16 I years know. old? Letterman appeared shocked and creepily disappointed, claimed he was nervous, and used this as a laughable moment that shouldn't fly. You know, I'm nervous now because no. I had no idea you were 16. Well, Aries aren't supposed to get nervous. All right, well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> he then questioned her about her boyfriend, but with a tone and demeanor that gave off uncomfortable energy. Danes was gracious throughout, but giggled nervously, and at one point she had her arms crossed in apparent discomfort. We can only imagine how uncomfortable it all made her. Number 14. Jimmy Kimmel and Gael Garcia Bernal – Jimmy Kimmel Live Mexican actor Gael Garcia Bernal appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live in 2017 to promote the animated film Coco. The movie took inspiration from Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, a holiday devoted to honoring and celebrating the departed. Yeah. The Day of the Dead is a holiday. No, what, on what day is the Day of the Dead celebrated? Is that on Halloween? It's... Kimmel asked Bernal about the Mexican holiday, which the latter graciously elaborated on despite Kimmel's almost childish interruptions. You're not going to believe this, but I'm not from Mexico. But... Uh, oh, man. Bernal notably explained that an altar is set up with photographs of the departed to which offerings are made. Kimmel then tried to make jokes, but they're more insensitive than funny. This can't have been an easy conversation for the actor to get through, and we were uncomfortable with him. Still, he handled it very well. Do they get candy in the skulls? The skulls are made of candy. Oh, they're made of candy. They're made of sugar, yeah. Number 13, David Letterman and Aishwarya Rai Bachchan, Late Show with David Letterman. Letterman was another host that could come off as sheltered when interviewing non-American guests, as is the case here. Now, I've uh, tried to explain a little bit about who you are and where you're from and what you do. Uh, why, why don't you help us out here? Uh, where are you from? I'm from India. When the host interviewed Indian actress Aishwarya Rai Bachchan, his line of questioning immediately went to her culture. He questioned her as though she was from Narnia, either feigning or actually displaying ignorance. Uh, uh, and your uh, uh, family still lives there? Yes, yes, yes. And you're, uh, you work in films in India? Mm-hmm. And, and this Bollywood thing, was I right about that also? About calling it Bollywood? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> B from Bombay, yeah. what is Hollywood that? What is... from Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> he poked fun at her for living with her parents, spoke of her worldwide fame while maintaining his lack of knowing who she is, and creepily questioned her on her modeling career. Well, how did, you, how did that begin? Sure. And what, what age did that happen? Were you a young girl when that began? Yeah. <laughs> to her credit, the actress was quick-witted and put the host in his place, despite her obvious discomfort shown in giggles and stare-downs. Number 12. Thierry Ardisson and Mila Jovovich – Tout le monde en parle In 2002, Mila Jovovich appeared on France's Tout le monde en parle. The guest had a translator, and the co-hosts talked about her in the third person in between questions. The tension seemed to begin a couple of minutes into the interview, as Jovovich was being interrupted and was understandably not having it. <laughs> While she started out jovial and all smiles, things shifted dramatically during a segment in which Thierry Ardisson recounted her life and career from childhood. You call your mother Satan, which is always very sympa. No, yes. no, no, oh je n'ai jamais. Everything seemed to be going smoothly until he mentioned the time her father was arrested for insurance fraud. Yes, it is true. My father oui, spent eight years in prison. Effectivement, mon père. Jovovich admitted this to be true, then, visibly shaken, knocked her water glass off the table and angrily stormed off. Yikes. Number 11. Jay Leno and Sofia Vergara. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. 
In 2010, Jay Leno had Sofia Vergara on his late night show, and the results were cringeworthy. Finally, an attractive guest. <laughs> At one point, Leno put up Vergara's vacation pictures. When the slide changed from a bikini shot, he insisted they go back to it. Just coming out of the Vatican. What, uh... Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what's going on? Wait, go back to the, wait, go back to the other picture. <laughs> Sadly, things didn't get better from there. The host then grilled her about her weight, which she obviously and understandably disliked. How much weight did you gain? Did you get any? <laughs> you didn't get any weight. Get any weight what did? question is that? It was enough to make everyone, Vergara included, uneasy. It should also be noted that fellow guest Gordon Ramsay did nothing to make Vergara comfortable either. In fact, it was quite the opposite, as he behaved in an extremely inappropriate manner throughout the interview, something for which many have since called him out. I never screamed like that in real life, you know? I was all really? acting. Uh, only yes. in the bedroom. Number 10. Ellen DeGeneres and Taylor Swift – The Ellen DeGeneres Show Taylor Swift has appeared on Ellen a number of times, but there were a few moments where she clearly wished she was elsewhere. Oh, I haven't talked to him in a while because we didn't date. Yes, you did. <laughs> Why do you deny it? DeGeneres would often ask Swift about her love life, which we know has gotten pretty old. In one particularly unsettling instance, she kept insisting that Swift had dated Zac Efron, despite the latter's insistence that she had not. Which song is about Zac on the new CD? Um, there's nothing really about Zac on the CD because we didn't, we didn't date. To make matters worse, the host then started going through a slideshow of the singer and various men. Anyone paying attention could tell Swift just wanted it to stop, especially because she eventually blatantly said so. Yet DeGeneres egged her on for far longer than necessary. What are, I, I don't know what I'm... You're supposed to ring But what? I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to. Right, I'll ring. Because they'll send me angry emails that I don't want to get them. The interaction has not gotten easier to watch, and it keeps aging badly with each passing year. Number 9. David Letterman and Uma Thurman – Late Show with David Letterman in the mid-90s, David Letterman interviewed Uma Thurman on Late Show, and it started out normally, with Dave making his usual lighthearted jokes. It's lovely there. Yeah. And the food, how was the food? Great, isn't it great? Yes. And the people, the people are very friendly, very nice. Very nice. Yes. I've, I've had uh, several experiences in Italy. Yet things got gradually uncomfortable, as Letterman seemed to be attempting to flirt with Thurman. He speaks of her upcoming film, yet makes a shift into asking her the ages of the men she's dated slipping his own age into the mix. And how does it end? To what end? What happens then? It ends happily. Oh, really? In, yes. in what sense? The, the young girl and the old man get married? No, 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 no. Have you ever been married yourself? She shoves him off uh, um, onto the person he belongs okay, to. Okay, I'm not talking about the film now. I want to talk more about you. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just trying to have, see if we get past that. Have, would you yourself <laughs> date an older man? What's the oldest man you've ever gone out with? Uma, in turn, tries to change the subject while nervously laughing. He tops it off with complimenting her ears and calling her, quote, a lovely piece of work. Uh, it, yes, this last weekend it opened and it's sort of growing a little bit more. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's opening in like New York and Los Angeles and then all over the country. Right. Yeah. Well, it's a lovely, lovely piece of work, as, as are you. <laughs> Number 8. Jimmy Kimmel and Katherine Langford. Jimmy Kimmel Live. It's hard to tell if this next one is a joke or a serious intellectual lapse. Even the guest appears confused. And I should have said something the other night. And in truth, I don't actually like change, but um, this change seems cool. Thanks, Clay. Kimmel was interviewing Catherine Langford from 13 Reasons Why, who is an actress from Australia. The questioning started the usual way, but then the host asked the actress where she learned to speak English. That is, what he called regular English, or what they speak in America. <laughs> and did you learn to speak English there? Is that where, I mean, <laughs> like... We, it is. Our yes. regular English that we speak here. She handled it with grace, yet the question was clearly greatly flawed. Perhaps the unease could have been prevented had Kimmel rephrased his question and asked about accents instead. Or he could have acknowledged that he misspoke, which would have saved him from the verbal flub or failed wisecrack, whatever it may have been. Is that something you learn from watching television or from friends or studying or what? Um, I mean, I think, I mean, partially probably just like from watching films. I mean, I feel like everyone who doesn't grow up in America vicariously lives through like American films. Number seven, Jimmy Kimmel and Markiplier with Mrs. May, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Back in 2015, Jimmy Kimmel got heat from the online gaming community after claiming to not understand the point of Let's Plays and live streaming. To understand better, Kimmel met with YouTubers Markiplier and Mrs. May, but didn't exactly come with an open mind. Markiplier, trying to be his normal, kind self, explained how being an influential gaming figure gives him the chance to make a difference. But Kimmel seemed more concerned with giving distasteful punchlines than listening. Like, I do charity events, I try to outreach, I go to 
conventions to meet my fans all the time. That, that's what makes it really special. And then you have sex with these people? Absolutely <laughs> not. No. How dare you, no. sir? Seeing that the current approach was going nowhere, Mrs. May opted to show how her parents reacted to virtual reality, thinking it might open Jimmy's eyes. Oh my god, oh my god! Is your mother having an orgasm? <laughs> I wouldn't know how that would sound like. I would it like sounds, to It sounds like, like that. Sound. Nope. Then, after a quick foray into another game, it seemed like Markiplier and Mrs. May couldn't get out of there fast enough. I hate watching other people have fun. Really? No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a horrible, horrible person. <laughs> Number six, Jimmy Kimmel and Joaquin Phoenix. Jimmy Kimmel Live. In an interview with Joaquin Phoenix, Jimmy Kimmel brought up Joaquin Phoenix's childhood breakdancing hobby. Did you dance as a kid, or do you have any, like, dance background? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't brag, but I was really good. <laughs> you were a good dancer? Yeah. <laughs> Phoenix seemed taken aback, perhaps not expecting the subject to come up. Kimmel pressed on, however, with Phoenix answering his questions, albeit visibly vexed while doing so. Phoenix even told him it wasn't something to laugh about. It's just something that I felt inside and expressed it. Just you and a piece of cardboard in your room. <laughs> I'm making fun of it, but it was pretty serious for me. To pour salt on the already sensitive wound, Kimmel surprised Phoenix with some bonus footage from Joker, which made the actor seem like kind of a diva. This led to a very uncomfortable Phoenix suddenly being made to apologize for his behavior on set. We can only assume he was really happy to see this interview come to a close. Now, what happened uh, there? La who's Larry? Um... <clears throat> Um, yeah, Larry is the cinematographer. Mm -hmm. um, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> and did he call you Cher? Uh, yeah, look, um, sometimes, sometimes movies get intense. Number five, David Letterman and Angelina Jolie. Late night with David Letterman. Um, You're laying out this year, huh? I'm gonna have to learn how to bake some cookies or something. You don't bake? I don't bake. You cook at all? In an interview with Angelina Jolie, David Letterman's questions became increasingly, mm, let's say, invasive. And she was clearly struggling to maintain her composure. He almost immediately commented on her smelling nice and brought up her relationship status. You smell great. You smell nice. That's a, that's a lovely fragrance. You smell good. I appreciate that. <laughs> Anything I can do. No, it's nice. She hesitated with her words as Letterman pressed her for more answers. It became clear that Jolie was not enjoying herself during this interview. We've seen some of Letterman's questionable behavior towards his female guests before on this list, and we'll see it again. And unfortunately, this cringy Angelina Jolie interview was no exception. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, do you, are you married? May I ask if you're married? Uh, <laughs> uh, um... Oh, no, that's all right. That's it. Paul, you know, are you I, I, I love... I am married. Okay, yes. Paul's I, I, no, married. I'm, I, we're, in the, we're in the process of, of a separation, but... Oh, but I'm sorry uh, to hear that. No, Forgive me, I'm no, sorry. I should, uh, perhaps I shouldn't have brought it up. Number four, Graham Norton and Cara Delevingne. Comic relief, Red Nose Day. This one is extra cringy. The thing about, uh, about that having sex on a plane. <clears throat> <laughs> As you have, clearly. Well, oddly, I have. Uh -huh. but, but how many... Oh, when, when. Let's talk well, about if it's that. just with yourself, it doesn't count. You know <laughs> <that>. <laughs> During his Graham Norton's Big Chat Live segment of Comic Relief's Red Nose Day telethon event in 2017, the host zeroed in on Delavine when the topic of the Mile High Club arose. He didn't quite ask her if she'd done it on a plane before, but rather stated it. She immediately appeared embarrassed and mentioned her father being in the crowd. But, but, Cara, but you, you were doing it, and then a man was My watching My father you. is here, by the way. Sorry, Dad. Oh, you're all right, I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was very worried then. I thought, where is this anecdote going? Uh, <laughs> so you were having, you were having a sex on and someone was watching you. Norton acknowledged this, yet pursued the line of questioning, brushing the dad issue aside in the quest for comedy gold. Delavine doesn't have such a great reputation as an interviewee, but it's hard not to take her side on this one. Yeah, it was... I don't even know how to start the story. No, we weren't. It, it was in me. the toilet. It was me. It was in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Why are you telling <laughs> everyone now? Sorry, why? <laughs> Number three, Jay Leno and Judith Light. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. In 1995, Jay Leno spoke with Judith Light of Who's the Boss fame. You know, the last time you were here, you were talking about that movie you did, The Women in Prison, which is like, it's a, it's the generic name for like a cable women in prison movie. And it had the shower scenes and I watched it. I freeze framed it. It was fascinating. You did? It was fascinating, yeah. <laughs> Things started off awkwardly. And to be honest, we can't see an interview like this being allowed to take place today. 
The host immediately brought up a prior interview, in which they discussed a film where Light appeared nude. He then seemed to constantly be looking to raise the topic of her on-screen nudity. Well, oh, put, your, break, no, put your arms around me, right. right, and do that. <laughs> now, now just, now just un unhook me. Chris, you watching? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am hooked. It's okay. That's, no. good, baby. That's good. That's good. Now what do I do? Now, okay. Now just do. I tie your arms with these. No, no, no. You don't tie them. Unhand her. This somehow led to Light showing Leno how cable TV nude shoots work, as he got way too close to her. He then held her hands behind her back and unbuttoned her shirt. She asked to go to commercial, clearly crying out for help, with fellow guest David Spade even showing obvious discomfort. You cut to commercial now? <laughs> no. <laughs> like not. soon? No, no, no. How about the skirt, too? <laughs> no, no, no. We don't do the skirt. We're, we're only prepared for the top. Sorry, baby. <laughs> Number two, Jimmy Fallon and Roger Waters. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. Fallon is a big fan of Pink Floyd and was understandably excited to be interviewing Roger Waters on Late Night. Uh, schizophrenia is, is uh, used to describe a, a, a loose um, kind of amalgamation of symptoms, of which many Sid had. He, you know, he heard voices and he had trouble um, keeping a grip on the reality of his situation. The subject inevitably turned to Sid Barrett, a former member of the band who left and was rumored to have suffered from some serious mental health issues, namely schizophrenia. Waters was noticeably emotional when discussing the late Barrett and took on a serious tone. Fallon then laughingly brought up a story about Barrett interrupting a Pink Floyd recording, referring to him as, quote, a bald man with a toothbrush in his mouth. Is the story true that you were recording, um, uh, I think it was Shine On You Crazy Diamond, and, and, and a bald man walked in with a toothbrush in his mouth and no, eye, no eyebrows? Am I making this up? Um, I, you know, it, it's not a funny story. Waters cleared up the story, making sure to tell Fallon that it wasn't a funny tale and that the entire situation was very sad. <laughs> I tried to make it funny. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, David Letterman and Jennifer Aniston. Late Show with David Letterman. In 1998, David Letterman talked to Jennifer Aniston at the height of her friend's fame. Good, because I've got a product report to read. It's like eight pages. I hope I don't fall asleep. <laughs> Why, did you write it? The interview started out normally, with typical questions and such. It then took a bit of a sudden weird turn, as Letterman asked for forgiveness, then leaned in ridiculously close to Aniston and took a strand of her hair in his mouth. Forgive me if this is rude, I just want to try one thing. Okay. Anton. She was thankfully handed a napkin to clean it off. I'm sorry. That's going to be worth something, a lot of money Something someday. to do with the steam room. <laughs> Now the uh, the film the films are already. People are off here going. I know people are people are horrified by that. We'll, we'll, we'll take it out in editing. Don't worry. That was something that I'll never forget. He then claimed that she scared him, and she let out a slight yell when he was performing his inappropriate action. Just bizarre. Well, you scared the hell out of me because you're right there. I'm just I, I'm like that, and all of a sudden you scream. See. When the interview continued, Aniston was visibly nervous and stumbling over her words from that point forward. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.